Oh, hi. This video is sponsored by Grammarly. You know, online communication can be tricky, especially in this new era of remote work. Have you ever overthought a simple email? Worrying that people might misconstrue your message? Well, you're not alone. As someone who spends a lot of time emailing and messaging the Watcher team, I know how important it is to communicate clearly and effectively, and that's why I use Grammarly Premium's tone rewrite suggestions to ensure my messages hit the right mark. Believe it or not, simply adding or subtracting a word or moving a comma can completely change how your message comes across to others. But with Grammarly, my tone is positive, solution-oriented, and conveys self-assurance even when I'm not feeling 100% confident, which is never. Now, don't let miscommunication get in the way of your success. Download Grammarly today and say goodbye to those awkward moments that works across multiple devices and platforms such as Google Docs. So come on, sign up at grammarly.com watcher to take your writing and tone to the next level. And for a limited time, get 20% off when you upgrade to Grammarly Premium. Guys, why wait? Sign up today and start communicating with clarity and confidence. And now, back to the show. This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. People love to look into other people's lives. Social media is proof of it. But imagine being able to look deeper into someone's private life not just seeing the edited happy moments, but also the sad ones, the boring parts, and seeing how they act naturally when they think no one is watching. Tonight, our inquisitive narrator finds an old camcorder containing way more than a glimpse into a stranger's life. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madé the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors. Turn off those lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. File 10. As a lifelong introvert, there are two main hobbies I use to fill my weekends. Long hikes in the wilderness and scouring garage sales and thrift shops for old home movies. Found footage, basically little glimpses into the lives of people in the past. That's cool. Wait, cool. home movies? That's yeah. f***ing weird. Yeah, that's like they're they're peeking into other people's lives. That's kind of neat. What else would you be doing it for? I don't know. To get there? Perv stuff. <laughs> Pervy stuff. We're talking pervs, folks. <laughs> so when I was out hiking earlier today, I was elated to stumble upon an old busted camcorder lying in a dried creek bed. It was like my two pastimes had merged. The thing looked like it had been buried for a year or so at least. The body of the camcorder was scratched to and the lens had a thin crack, but the memory card looked intact. I tossed it in my bag and spent the rest of my hike wondering what sorts of birthday parties and camping trips I'd find when I got the files on my computer. When I got home, I ordered a pizza as I started the file transfer. I'm excited to watch the files, post anything that seems of wider interest to YouTube, and call it an early night. The following will be a record of the files on the camcorder. Oh, this is fun. It's a good format. What do you think is going to be on this first file? I think it's going to be <laughs> You ever seen No, what are you talking about? It's just a classic thing where people are like, uh, you know, ancient art was unearthed, and then you click on it, and it's just I mean, That certainly is a, a with a Yeah, I think he's got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. File one. The interior of a car appears on the screen, an older model with trash littered in the cup holders and large camping backpacks filling the back seat. A messy haired young man sits in the driver's seat as he drives along a long dirt expanse. The camera turns around to show the operator, a young girl. Her hair falls along her shoulders in soft brown waves, framing the most piercing blue eyes I have ever seen, like shards of the ocean itself, impossible to look away from. While still pointing the camera at herself, say hi, Dylan. The driver, Dylan, smiles, but seems a bit camera shy. Tell everyone where we're going, Dill. 
Dylan replies, camping. With who? With Sydney and her most recent boy toy. With Sydney and Jordan, yay! The woman's enthusiasm is contagious and Dylan smiles. Speaking of, as the car slows, the camera operator rolls down her window and sticks the camera out, giving me a view of a man and a woman, seemingly in their 20s, presumably Sydney and Jordan. Hey guys, says the camera woman. Jordan has a nervous smile, but Sydney is as excited as the camera woman. Heather, Dylan, camping, woo! Heather says, just a second, let me make room. End of file one. That sounds so like the beginning of a horror movie. That's right, always is like just a fun time. And how's it gonna go bad? You're already in the woods. So that's already, you know, one step closer to land. You know, there's always like the party couple. We got the party couple. Yeah. Like, woo, we got a Hey, woo! Uh, there's always one of them who's like really kind of like mousy and yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. This also reminded me when they were talking about like the dirty cup holders. I need to clean my car. It's a fucking disaster. I cannot stand dirty cars. Oh, they make me want to throw you up. You should never look in my car then. Oof. It's bad. Like embarrassing bad. File two. 15 seconds long. A hike through the woods. Sydney and Heather walk in front, chatting and catching up. Behind them walks a relatively quiet Jordan, meaning Dylan is filming. He pauses and does a sweep of the woods with the camera. The sun is starting to set. It's beautiful. End of file two. File three. My computer screen floods with a green haze. It took me a moment to realize I was looking at a basic form of night vision, fancy camcorder. The screen is a woman's feet as she walks through the woods. When she comes to a big rock, she says, oop, not tripping over you. Sydney's voice. She slips past the rock and it dawns on me that she's using the camcorder's night vision to navigate the forest without tripping. Sometimes when I'm not wearing my glasses, if I'm like, oh, I don't have my glasses around, I'll take my phone out and just put it in front of my face and it gives me vision. Whoa, that's genius. I know. I've never thought of that. Yeah, it's fucking sick, dude. I can't be good for your eyes. You're well, just... I'm not doing it all the time. But it's I just mean, I've done you're, it you're, here and there. You're like fucking piping blue light, like just right into your eyeballs, like at close proximity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her pace is quick and nervous. Her breath hitched. When she spots a downed branch, she sets the camcorder down and starts breaking it apart. She must have been charged with finding more wood for a fire. At one point, while trying to snap a thick branch in half, her torso tenses and her head snaps up. She looks around, like a rabbit sensing danger. I look at the audio track on my computer, but there's nothing. Whatever sound she heard, the microphone didn't pick it up. With sticks in hand, she lets out a huff and starts to walk back the way she came, humming a gentle melody. It sounds like a lullaby, something a mother would sing to a scared child. Simple repetitive, comforting. She's trying to be brave. She starts to mutter to herself, why can't we ever do a weekend someplace nice? Why can't we ever camp at a spa? It was almost amusing. Suddenly, the crunching of the leaves stopped. She pauses and listens. Her breath comes in uneven gasps. When she starts moving again, her pace is quicker and she begins to hum again. Apparently, the gentle hum wasn't enough to ease her anxiety, as after a bit, she begins to whistle. Sydney, there you are. It's Heather calling out to Sydney. Sydney stops whistling and says, there you guys are, man, these woods. Except she didn't stop whistling. It was still there under Sydney's words. I ran the clip back to the last few seconds. Sydney does start talking, but the whistling continues. Do they hear the whistle? No, but I don't want to put my, my Shaniac hat on because frankly, it's too big for oh, my head. I knew you were going to go there. But uh, I will say that wind, you know, in the woods does tend to sound like a whistle. Uh, yeah, but that's more of a... That's good. And not like a... <whistles> what if you heard... Stick it out of your throat so it's wiggling out there like a xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> Something about this sourceless whistle feels weird. It feels like a chilled wind against the tip of my ears, sending shivers licking down the nape of my neck and ice along my spine. And if it wasn't coming from Sydney, 
then where was it coming from? End of file three. I love the file format. It is, it is good. We love files in this office. Oh. <laughs> file four, the video flickers and the forest floor appears on my screen for a moment before turning a dead black. Audio still works, but all I can hear is a distant rustling and the occasional giggle from what sounds like Sydney. I turn up the volume and bits and pieces of conversation come through. I think I heard one of the girls say, that's not funny, give it back. Then a, seriously, Jordan. After some muffled conversation, Sydney speaks clearly. Did you hear that? Her voice was barely a whisper, but crystal clear, as if she were standing not just right behind the camcorder, but right behind me, as I was watching it on my computer. I start the file again to see if I can hear what Sydney mentions, but the volume all the way up, I still can't make out the muffled conversation. Now show me the realization you hear something. Oh, <laughs> much bigger. Was that too much? I thought it was gonna be more like, I thought you'd get really scared right away, like, and throw, throw him across the room. No! You gotta listen to this. Oh, Turn I'd be up. like, all right, let me check it out, bro. Do you have a splitter? Yeah. I still can't make out the muffled conversation, but I do make out the whistle. The exact same whistle from the previous file. Same pitch, same rhythmic lilt, same hollow melody. It doesn't sound like a whistle Sydney is making. It doesn't sound like a whistle any human is making. End of file four. I'm not gonna lie, I'd be pretty f***ing stoked if I found this camera at this point. Oh yeah, cause you're in the clear. You're just like, like whoa, this is pretty f***ed up. This is some cool cinema. But it's content, baby. Yeah, I know. And I is, love it. I that, eat it up like it would be crazy. turkey. I'd be I'd, eating, I'd, 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 eating popcorn at home. Oh, absolutely. I'd pitch it to Apple. I'd be like, hey, I got this box of up footage. Let's make a series out of this. True crime's hot right now. Yeah. So dwindling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people are getting a little tired of it. But let's do it, Apple. File 5 begins with chaos. Heather yells, piercing through my headphones, still turned all the way up. <laughs> Dude, can you shut your girlfriend up? She won't stop screaming like R2D2. She's been doing it for fucking hours. <laughs> that explains the whistling, too. Oh, it's f***ing, are they being tracked by R2-D2? Is she R2-D2? Her voice is hoarse and rattling, as if she'd been screaming for hours. She keeps repeating one word, Sydney. Time's passed, and the sun hangs low in the sky, painting the trees with a fiery hue. Sunset, maybe? Or sunrise? It's hard to tell. One of the guys holds the camera, filming Heather as she bats branches and bushes away, tearing a path through the overgrowth. He asks her to slow down but Heather doesn't listen. Sydney, Sydney? Her desperation is infectious. As I watch, my own heart begins to pound. Suddenly, Heather stops, frozen in place. The camera operator lets out a holy <laughs> and pans to the side, revealing a motionless Sydney lying on the ground. Her hair is a tangled mess of leaves, her face covered in blood. Thick black mud coats her neck and her clothes, as if she'd been dragged to where they found her. Her eyes were closed, and from what I can tell from the video, she's barely breathing. I feel myself start to gag. End of file five. Is she hiding from the predator? I thought the coat of mud all over her, she's hiding from the predator. It's Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jason Bourne, yeah. predator, and R2-D2, R2 so those are our three main suspects. Knock, knock, knock. I spin around in my chair, my veins filled with ice water. Someone was at my door. Knock, knock, knock. Slowly, I got up and started walking to the peephole. I took a deep breath and looked out to see the pizza guy. I snapped back to reality and took a break to eat my dinner. At this point, I seriously considered never returning to these files. When you're into found footage, you quickly develop a tolerance for stumbling upon disturbing stuff. You won't believe how many people unknowingly donate a homemade sex tape in a box of old VHSs. But seeing Sydney like this made me want to stop, like I'd finally reached my moral line in the sand. After a couple slices, however, I resolved to continue. 
What if this was evidence for some horrible mystery? What if I was watching the only clues in a murder? I decided I was too far in. I had to keep watching. Does this mean that guy did watch all the tapes then? I mean, it sounds like they're the opposite of what we were suspecting, which is they're not a perv. They're in it for just, you know, little slices of life. They're not into the other stuff. That's more comforting to you? Yeah. File six, night vision again. The forest, serene and calm. Gentle snoring can be heard in the background, as well as the breathing of at least two others. For a few minutes, the camera doesn't move. It's just of the woods, as if someone had turned the camcorder on to keep watch. Then, a rustling from behind the camera. Someone picks the camera up and pans over three sleeping bodies. Jordan, Dylan, then Heather, all in extreme close-ups, all sleeping. The shots feel perverse. And if those three are sleeping, it means the person filming must be. Relief floods my body as the camera is set down. And Sydney walks in front of the lens. She looks better than she did in the last file, but barely. There are no showers out in the woods, but she did her best to get the blood off her face and she's wearing new clothes. She stares out into the woods. After a beat, she slowly raises her hand. From the still trees, suddenly, a flutter of wind moves the branches as one, as if the forest was waving back. A few seconds later, the clip ends. End of file six. Is she an X-Man? No, I was thinking, is she a witch? Oh, maybe. I'm gonna go witch. What are you going, you're going X-Man? I'm going sort of a storm situation. Like a storm? Yeah. yeah, okay. File seven. File seven again has no video, only 12 seconds long. The rustling of branches and the crunching of leaves. Loud breathing can be heard, like someone is panting straight into the camcorder's microphone. In the distance, a loud howl, and under it all, barely audible, the familiar whistle. End of file seven. File eight, clumpy lashes sodden with tears flutter across the screen. This time it's not Sydney, but Heather, ghost white pupils surrounded by the sickly green of the night vision. The audio is heavy breathing, filled with anxiety. My lips quiver as I let out my own sharp shaking breath. Heather's eyes dart from one side of the screen to the other. In the background, it sounds like a herd of animals might be running. Sticks snap and leaves crackle while a fierce wind blows, tangling Heather's hair. She fights through tears as she strains her voice. I think it's just a prank, she whispers. But I just woke up and they're gone. It's not funny. I don't know why they would think this is funny, but I swear I keep hearing things and I don't know if it's them or... I'm so scared and I don't know what to do. Seriously, if anyone finds this, I love my mom, I love my dad, I love Dylan, or I did before he pulled this prank. I love, suddenly she stops and claps a hand over her mouth, trying to be quiet. Tears stream down her face as she strains to hear something. End of file eight. You're camping, you wake up. Yeah. Everybody's gone. What do you do for, uh, after you shark yourself? I think I stay in my tent, honestly. Yeah. Till morning? Wait it out. Wait it out till daylight. Yeah. What if it's a Blair Witch Woods where even daylight is scary because the more you walk, you just, you're in circles. I like my chances better at daylight. Yeah. Still, because I can see everything around me 360. What do you do? Oh, of course I wait till daylight. Yeah, I sleep yeah. in. Make a coffee with one of those like sick like portable coffee makers. Yeah, those are really cool have. the way they bubble. Yeah, yeah, butane, yeah, bubble like, yeah it's dope. File nine, night vision. Heather's voice, quiet, whispering to the camcorder. Okay, I just found this, this. The stillness is shattered as Heather begins to vomit. I feel the prickling on the back of my tongue as I struggle not to join her. Suddenly, while the camera is pointed at the expanse of trees, a pair of eyes lights up in the dark and we see what made Heather throw up. A deer, dead. Its slender legs cracked and bent at unnatural angles. A large gash is torn through its side from sternum to gut. Mangled insides spill out. In the background, the same whistle can be heard, but louder, more defined. Heather's retching turns into a sob and she starts to mutter a prayer. Desperate to ease my own waves of nausea, I fast forward. Trees and dirt all shot in night vision. Then, suddenly, a clearing. 
I stop fast forwarding and watch at normal speed. The clearing itself is a perfect circle. No branches or tree roots dare to cross the forbidden border. Even the ground within was bare of any foliage or fallen leaves. The only thing in the clearing is three figures. I'm gonna assume they're all dead as but they might be just napping. You well, know? are they standing? <clears throat> Actually, I haven't read the next part, so I don't know, but. Let's bet on it. I think they're taking a nap. I think they're standing. The central figure had rich, blonde hair that seemed to glisten under the light of the stars. The ends were matted, but it undoubtedly belonged to. Sydney? For a second, I'd forgotten Heather was the one filming. The name seemed like it almost pained Heather to say, each syllable like sandpaper on her tongue. Heather forces another, Sydney? A little louder this time. Suddenly, Sydney's head twitches, unlike any human movement I've ever seen, like a malfunctioning animatronic. Heather drops the camcorder to the ground. In the fallen frame, I can see Heather's soiled sneakers move towards her friends. Then, she stops and screams. <coughs> End of file nine. You start glitching out like a, a, a wacky animatronic at Disneyland. Yeah. I'm gonna call the cops and I'll let them handle it. I'm trying to, like, is it sort of like a... That's not too scary. What's scary? Have to be more Dude, like... give me a scary. It's going like that? Well, they're glitching out, you know. Yeah, like a, hey Shane. And you just went. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> exactly. File 10, the last file on the camcorder. At first, it looks like it's just my reflection on the computer screen. It takes me a full 30 seconds to realize it's not my reflection, but me. Actually me, from earlier in the day. Wait, no, no! Whoa, oh, come oh, on, sh no! Oh. Holy oh, sh hey, I'll tell you what, it's been a while since one of these stories got me. Yeah, that's good. I did not predict that. I stand in the middle of the woods, light flaring in the lens as I inspect the lens and point it at myself. I had no idea the camcorder was recording. How could it be? The thing looked broken beyond salvaging. I toss it in my bag and the video is dark. Except, what's that? I rewind the video. Right before I put the camcorder in my bag, I pause and notice. I'm not alone. Behind me on screen stands another figure watching me, almost close enough to touch me. Heather, her mouth opened unnaturally wide, as if still broken in that heart-shattering scream. Her pupils, if they were even there, were imperceivable. She was looking at me with unblinking wide eyes, looking at me through the screen. I tear my headphones out, panting. I look around for my phone to call the police. Then, from within the room, close enough to feel on the back of my neck. I hear the whistle. So, are you scared? Yowza! Guy's a goner. He's dead as I don't know what happened. I guess there's like some whistling thing out there, R2-D2. There's, there's R2-D2 is, is stacking up bodies out just, in the wilderness. Just out there getting that kill count up, getting those numbers up. Sounds like, so maybe this thing is just possessing people? I guess so. And then uh, the whistling is the harbinger of doom there. Like, you know. I need closure. If any movie is like, oh, what do you think about that? I always just in my mind, I'm like, they died. And that That's helps you why. go to sleep, you need the closure. Yeah, please explain. I'm okay with it. Being a mystery. Well, great story. And that was actually written by a former watcher intern, Ronnie Tulo. A homegrown watcher yeah. product there. She knows her found footage, I'll tell you that.